right now, Texas is facing a giant winter storm that they were completely unprepared for because Texas obviously isn't used to winter weather. Um, so most of the experts are already saying this is climate induced. Um, obviously, there's a misconception out there about climate change that it's just going to make everything hotter. Um, but in reality, there's more energy now trapped below the, the atmosphere. Every time I talk about science, it goes wrong. I'm going to do my best here, though. There's more energy now because of all the, all the fossil fuels and all the greenhouse gases that are being emitted. Um, and it creates a situation where you can get more turbulent storms and, and crazy weather conditions in places where we're not used to seeing them. And you're seeing a perfect example of that here with this, with this winter storm in Texas. Um, and, and I think there's an interesting way in which the liberal media is covering this. Um, and Marcus Diapola, I think that's how you pronounce his last name, is a famous uh, news reporter on TikTok. And he covered the story and he has just gotten in, insane backlash for how he covered the story. Um, and rightfully so. So I'll just play his clip um, and then we'll talk a little bit more about how this is being covered. Um, what's going on in Texas and then what we can do. I'm going to shout out some mutual aid organizations in the area if, if you want to donate and help the people in Texas right now. All right, let's watch the clip. Texas electricity is all fucked up because Republicans wanted electricity to be run like a business instead of a government service. As we all know, businesses have to make a profit in order to exist. The problem is that businesses generally do what's necessary to make money and don't actually give a shit about customers, so they have to be forced to take care of their customers by rules created by the government. Well, Republicans don't like rules either. They call them government regulations. Enjoy your power blackouts, Texas. You voted for him. All right, so that was a very interesting way of covering this. Um, interesting as in bad, condescending, classist. You know, people are very, very mad at Marcus for this take. And I agree with them, you know, to, to say at the end there, this is your fault, Texans. You voted for Donald Trump four years ago. You bought, brought this on yourself. As their roofs are collapsing because there's too much snow and their houses weren't built to withstand the snow. As their, their power lines are being shut down for who knows how long it's going to be before they can get people to rebuild those. And these, you know, what are frigid temperatures for people in the south? I live in the Midwest, so like our houses are built for this. You know, we have clothes for this. We prepare for this, you know, because this is what the weather's normally like. It's not normally like this in Texas. You know, people are saying this is a climate change induced storm, as I said in the intro. Um, so I Obviously, this is a classes take. Again, a lot of the people who are dying too in Texas, and there are people dying from the storm, are homeless people. You know, so you're gonna tell a homeless person this is your fault because you didn't vote for Trump. I mean, because you voted for Trump. What what is your logic there? And even by that logic, Texas almost went for Biden. You know, it was about 50-50. <laughs> it was a swing state this year. They almost voted for Biden. So even by your logic. It doesn't make any sense. Your take, you're you're blaming them um, for what's going on right now. Um, but but here's the the main problem with this take, and which with liberalism in general is that he thinks he's diagnosed the root of the problem. Right? He looks at what's going on in Texas, and he says the problem here is that these people voted for Trump, and they didn't vote for enough Democrats. If we had enough Democrats, this wouldn't be going on. I have diagnosed the root of the problem. I know what's wrong with the country and with Texas, um, and these stupid people don't, and that's why they're in this situation, because they voted for Trump. But that's not the problem. This is a climate-induced storm. What is Biden doing for, for the climate crisis other than getting us back into the Paris Climate Agreement, which is essentially propaganda? It's essentially all the countries coming together and saying, oh, let's trick everyone into thinking we're actually doing it, something. You know, and it set quotas, and some countries are trying to follow those quotas. But under Obama, the U.S. wasn't even on target to hit the quotas that they agreed to um, for reducing fossil fuel emissions. And, of course, everything's been deregulated under Trump. But Marcus acts like if we had Democrats in office, like they were about to nationalize the fossil fuel industry and move us towards renewables and a system that's sustainable with the environment that looks to uh, eliminate these problems of metabolic rift, it's called, um, and, and climate change. But they're not. That's not what Joe's calling for. Joe's the president right now. He's done nothing to crack down on the fossil fuel industry, despite other than the Keystone Pipeline, which we're just going to go get our oil for elsewhere or from elsewhere. Right. The only thing that can solve this is eco-socialism, which is not something Marcus supports. He doesn't understand the root of the problem is capitalism, a system based on, a system based on constant expansion on a planet of limited resources. Right. He doesn't understand 
or he doesn't agree that humans are destroying the planet and the fossil fuel companies are destroying the planet and the only way to stop them from doing so is to seize them, have the workers seize them and smother them as we replace them with renewable energy and move people into new and better jobs in the clean energy sector. That's not what Marcus is calling for. He's calling for you to vote for Joe Biden. He's like, oh yes, we care very much about climate change. We're gonna sign this deal telling everybody that we're going to do something and, and then don't, don't worry about it. That's not going to help Texas. That's not going to help Puerto Rico who got hit by a climate storm uh, or a climate hurricane recently. You know, you have not diagnosed the problem yet, Marcus, as you sit here condescendingly telling people that, that they're the problem because they voted for Trump. You know, part... A huge part of the problem is that people think once every four years they can show up, vote for the Democratic candidate, and then everything's going to be better. And then homeless people won't die of climate change storms in Texas. No, you're wrong. And you telling everybody that they're the ones who are wrong, I mean, looks really silly and looks really condescending. And it shows why conservatives, you know, vote for Trump, why they hate liberals and the political establishment so much. They feel talked down to, like you are talking down to them in a time when people are really really struggling when people are dying and losing their homes. Um, again, homelessness. A lot of the homeless people are dying. Is Biden going to stop homelessness? In four years, are there still going to be hundreds of thousands of homeless people in the streets of America? Yes. He's not calling to nationalize housing. We have more empty homes than there are homeless people. Biden's not calling to move those people in there. He's not even calling to set a price ceiling uh, for what rent can be. He's not calling for any of this. All the people in Texas could have voted for Biden. He could have won 100 percent of the vote in 2016 or, or, or you know, Hillary could have won 100 percent of the vote in 2016 or Biden could have won 100 percent of the vote in 2020. There'd still be homeless people. There would still be a climate storm and the liberals still wouldn't have a solid plan for how to fix it because they're corporatists. And if you can't recognize that as you're talking down to working people, you're not helping anything. You're just being classist and you're and you're putting the problem on them and not only putting the problem on them, but you're alienating them. Right. You're sitting here in, in this comfortable position, making tons of money off the TikTok creator fund. I know because I'm a TikTok creator, too. <laughs> and and you're telling these people this is your fault that your house is flooded. You voted for Trump. This is your fault that you're homeless and, and now you're trapped in the winter weather, which please, Marcus, have you ever been in a situation like that? Have you ever been in a situation like that? And if you were, would you want a media personality to walk up to you and go, well, shouldn't have voted for that guy when that guy is the president now and he's not doing jack shit to help Texas. So what's your point here? But this is the problem with liberalism in general. It's a misdiagnosis of what's wrong with the country, right? The other side is wrong. The Republicans are wrong. No, both parties are corporatists. They're not going to implement eco-socialism. They're not going to nationalize housing. They're not going to make public utilities um, publicly owned. Or they're not going to make all utilities public and keep the price down. They're going to continue to screw people. They're not going to launch a giant infrastructure project that we need because the U.S. infrastructure gets a grade of D and you're seeing our power grid and or our power grids and our housing is collapsing in the middle of a winter storm because our infrastructure is also completely un unprepared to face climate change. What is Joe Biden's plan for that? What is he planning to enact to fix that? Nothing. So why are you telling me that if everyone voted for Biden, these people in Texas wouldn't be struggling? They still would. Ridiculous. <laughs> so uh, that's that's my take on this. And, and us as socialists or communists, we do want to help, right? We, we want to help these people and we want to show them the way forward. The, the way to fix your problems is eco-socialism, to plan production. Quit letting these billionaire uh, fossil fuel oligarchs like the Koch brothers destroy the planet and underpay their workers while uh, making insane profits, nationalize them, move to renewables, uh, quit letting landlords um, evict people from their homes um, and prevent homeless people from having shelter because there's a price gap because we have to let landlords be this parasitic instrument collecting millions of dollars for, for doing no actual labor. Get rid of landlords, nationalize housing. This is how we help the working class, especially in the era of, of the climate crisis, because this is going to keep happening and it's going to keep getting worse. And liberals are going to keep saying, uh, you know, you just got to vote for our guy and it'll get better. These storms will stop happening if you if you vote for our guy. And we need to be there to say, no, you need to implement eco-socialism. You need to make sh uh, housing a human right. You need to make... Um, uh, public utilities, a human right. And we need to launch a huge program giving tons of people jobs to rebuild our crumbling infrastructure in a way that's going to be resilient to all the climate storms. 
Uh, so I'm, I'm going to leave some mutual aid organizations and some other organizations you can donate to in the description down here if you want to help the people in Texas. Um, there's one for Mutu Austin Mutual Aid. They've launched a GoFundMe campaign bringing people food and shelter. Um, there's a Texas Division of Emergency Management, um, a group called Feeding Texas. That'll give you a list of all the food banks in various areas. All of those will be linked down in, in the description. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, solidarity um, and, and just good energy towards all the people of Texas. Um, we'll be thinking of y'all and trying to do everything we can financially and, and with our rhetoric to get you guys the help that you need um, because eventually climate change is going to affect us all, right? Texas is just kind of one of the first places it hit. And this, you know, there was a climate change storm in Puerto Rico a few years ago where the same thing happened, you know, uh, um, the U.S. government didn't give them any relief. And then all the liberals said, ah, oh, it's Trump's fault, you know, and yes, yeah, Trump's a buffoon. He's a dum-dum. But we need to recognize that both parties have been bought by the ruling class of America. And the ruling class doesn't want to do anything about the ills that exist in our society. Homelessness, climate change, endless wars. Need I go on? All right. Thanks for watching, everyone. Uh, check out those links in the description and we'll see you later.